biased input. What do I mean by biased input? This is a very important uh, concept. Uh, Terence uh, Sheehan described three different examples of AI bias. First, US healthcare used a healthcare cost history to determine who needed extra medical care. This had the effect of favoring white patients over black patients because they had a higher healthcare cost history, which is really just a way of saying they just spent more on healthcare. So therefore the system would recommend that white patients take more treatment than black patients. This is, this is the reality. Um, the US court system, the used a correctional offender management profile for alternative sanctions or uh, compass for short. Uh, the system was used, it used historical data to determine who would likely become a repeat offender. The model predicted that black offenders were twice as likely to commit future crimes than their white counterparts. So the algorithm was had that bias built in because that's the bias wasn't I'll, I'll talk about this in a bit. <laughs> Amazon, it had hiring algorithm, it used historical data to determine who to hire. And since more men were hired in the past, it tended to favor men. You know, all the three of these examples, uh, let's see, maybe I'll switch to this one. So all three of these examples, they showed how bias can be present in the data to begin with, right? So if you start with data that has the bias built in, like historical information, that bias, when you train an AI on it, will contain those same biases. This is a very important concept because AI, it doesn't think critically about the data that it's being fed, right? That's, that's our job. And so if you train the AI, which contains this biased information, you will get biased results on the other end. You know, the AI is not trying to be cruel, uh, but it's trained with data that comes with embedded bias. So what do I mean by, by that? So mm, let me just double check the comments here. Okay, yeah. It listens to say the unconscious milliseconds we spend browsing social media feeds. Um, like we, in terms of browsing, we, we browse the height of the Statue of Liberty every single day with our thumbs. Our fight or flight response causes our thumbs to scroll away from things that scare us and react in anger and outrage uh, online. Now, the healthcare, justice, and worker examples are just the tip of the iceberg. You really start to see the power of these organizations when their AI is systematically tested for bias. So do you want to know the paper that got Timnit Jebru fired from Google? Yes. Pop yes in the comments. Yes. This paper is titled On the Dangers of Stochastic or Random Guessing Parrots. Can language models be too big? And there's actually like a little emoji of a parrot on it. It's very cute. So the purpose of large language models or LLMs 
is to analyze huge bodies of text in order to randomly generate new text, such as translations in a different language. So you can, you can also think beyond like Google Translate because it can also be used to generate blogs and social media posts uh, that seem like a, a person actually wrote it. It's actually quite good. Um, so for example, college student Liam Poor used OpenAI's GPT-3 language generator to create a, a daily random AI generated self-help blog uh, from a series of carefully selected titles. Uh, the AI was trained from a language model of thousands of self-help blogs. And good news, it went viral. People liked what they saw. Tens of thousands watched, liked, and commented on the daily posts. Many of the posts read like a typical self-help blog, but sometimes the structure was a bit odd and sometimes the main message didn't make any sense. Yet only three of the tens of thousands critical thinkers ever questioned if the blog was made by a real person. And guess what? Those comments, ah, this thing can't be real. They were quickly downvoted. Quickly downvoted. Can I please post a link to this paper? Uh, asks Aluna. 100%. Um, I have references for everything, and what I'll do is uh, I'll just send a like a reply to yours right away. Uh, therefore, you have it. I will make a, a separate blog post about this as well. Uh, but thank you for your question. Absolutely, I will. Now, can you imagine an AI like this being used to quickly generate misinformation? I mentioned in a previous live stream that Section 230 Safe Harbor discourages companies from moderating content. So imagine your social media feed flooded with what looks like legitimate news articles powered by a bot army of AI generated extreme news. It's happening. It happens. Even incorrect translations can also cause harm when they're connected with uh, law enforcement. So for example, in 2017, Facebook mistranslated a Palestinian man's good morning post to the Hebrew attack them, leading to his arrest. So let's go back to Jebru and her team that showed that these large language models consume, one, a lot of energy. One model uh, training for one model is the equivalent to the lifetime carbon emissions of five cars. She also showed that AI trained with large bodies of text often contain racist or sexist language in their training input. The input itself has the bias built in. Me Too and Black Lives Matter has tried to establish a new anti-sexist and anti-racist vocabulary, but AI trained to manipulate language rather than understand it will always contain the biases of everyone on the internet rather than the voice of a vocal few. A 2020 paper on Google's translation and large text query engine, BERT, showed that BERT tended to associate phrases referring to disabilities such as cerebral palsy or blindness with negative language. So 
what happened? What happened with this paper? Well, Timnit was fired from Google after rejecting a manager's request to retract or remove her name from the paper. Uh, later, uh, Google's head of research stated that the paper failed to cite research on making more efficient language models and ways to mitigate bias. Guys, this paper had 128 citations. It was described as a very solid and well-researched piece of work by University College London researchers. The, the number of references was not the limiting factor here. And this was only the start for the ethical AI team at Google. On February the 5th, another leader of Google's ethical AI team, you may have heard this if you're in the computer science circles, her name is Dr. Margaret Mitchell. She lost access to her work accounts after speaking up on the firing of Dr. Timnit Jebru. And a few days later, she, on February 19th, she learned that she had been terminated with cause at the same time that Sami Bengio, a director at Google with roughly 300 reports, was outed from his management role at Google's ethical AI. Uh, Sami had already expressed support for Timnit, um, and he was a, an advocate for women at Google. He hired 39% women compared to 14% uh, on average for the rest of the research organization at Google. We've heard about some research changes uh, tying executive compensation to diversity and inclusion goals. Uh, yet the discussion around ethical AI, especially at Google, remains slowed at best. Uh, which brings me to my next point, which is very important. But before I move on, is this making sense so far? A um, little bit more doom and gloom, a little bit more consequences. I hope it's making sense. I'm, I'm switching between all of the different platforms, just making sure that I don't miss anybody's comments, because uh, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm there and I'm able to, to listen. Hi, this is Cynthia. Would you have an email? I can send an inquiry to you. Yes, 100%, Cynthia. I will, I will send you my uh, email. Okay, thank you. Just checking. I do want to make sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. 